It's been a few weeks since our last tier list update, and a lot has changed. Not only did we see some massive class balance changes this week after the Tuesday hotfixes, but now that the season is well and truly underway, we also have a much better idea about how the meta is shaping out as a whole, especially now that tier sets are becoming a lot more common. Well, at least for those of us lucky enough to loot some pieces anyway. So with the help of our rank 1 consultants and analyzing the most recent data, we're set to bring you the updated solo shuffle tier list for patch 10.1. And remember, if you truly want to improve fast and get the rating you've always wanted, then head to skillcap.com. It's completely risk-free to try us out as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill caps, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Anyway, let's get started. Starting off, we've got Subtlety Rogue, who over recent weeks have become one of, if not the most dominant melee spec in Solo Shuffle. A lot of this power has been tied into the strength of their tier set, which is now also becoming a lot more common. What has made this set so strong is the new current go-to build, which involves picking up the Rotten, where the synergy between this talent and the two set means you can now get out two very hard-hitting Shadow Strikes during your standard dance rotation. On Tuesday though, we did see this build targeted with some pretty impactful changes, including nerfs to Secret Technique, Weapon Master, Flagellation, and Dark Shadow. Overall, these nerfs are obviously very big, but it's fair to say that when a spec has been as dominant as Subtlety over the past few weeks, it comes as no surprise. So what does this change? Well, the Flagellation one-shot build will become a lot less popular, but it's unlikely rogues will deviate from the Rotten build because of this. And even though these nerfs are fairly drastic, it will more so just help bring Sub more in line with other melee. Will you still die 100 to 0 in a single dance after these changes? Yes. So does it really matter? Not really. In our last update, we had sub at A+, and despite them quite obviously being well above S tier for the last few weeks, but for current placement, we still think it's fair to keep them inside A plus tier for now despite these nerfs. That being said, we will be doing a more consolidated update next week to see how all of the changes affect the meta as a whole. Next up, we got Enhancement Shaman. We'll probably end up mentioning this quite a bit during this tier list, but currently, if you've been playing over the last few weeks, you'll understand just how dominant casters are at the moment. So, to be able to hold a footing in the current meta as a melee, you need to be able to hold your own. Our next spec of Enhancement does one better, though. As recently, it's almost as if Enhancement Shamans have been a necessary justice for the meta. Not only are they super durable against magic damage thanks to additions like Seasoned Winds, which now lasts 18 seconds and stacks up to 3, making Enhancement practically immortal against casters as you're able to get up to a 45% damage reduction if you're consistent with interrupts, not to mention its interactions with Chaos Bolt. But on top of that, Enhancement Shamans are also incredibly disruptive, with the short cooldown on Wind Shear coupled with Grounding Totem. Much like Subtlety Rogue though, it's fair to say Enhancement Shamans have been a little bit too strong on the damage front, especially since getting access to their tier set, which is only added to their already high burst damage by buffing both their mastery, physical, fire, and chain lightning damage, after using Sundering. But with the Tuesday hotfixes, Blizzard have attempted to tone this burst down some by targeting Forceful Winds and Ashen Catalyst, as well as the damage from Feral and Elemental Spirits. But to offset this, the overall damage of Storm Strike and Lava Lash, as well as Wind Strike during Ascendance, have all been increased. The result of these nerfs, and by targeting these modifiers in this way, will result in the peak of enhancements burst damage being considerably lower. That being said, non-modified sustained damage will go up, so overall the fixes are pretty good, and should just remove those cheese one-shots you can't even play around while still keeping enhancement more than viable. For their placement, it's fair to say again enhancement was undeniably S tier over the recent weeks, but in this update we're still happy with them remaining inside of our A plus tier, assuming the meta stays relatively the same after these changes. One spec making a climb after the hotfixes is Arms Warrior. Warriors at the start of this season were looking like one of the strongest melee for Solo Shuffle, but with a series of nerfs targeting the Skull Splitter build and Sharpened Blade in the previous round of hotfixes, coupled with the influx of casters, meant it left Arms Warriors in a pretty sorry spot, so much so that even Fury had begun to become more of a solid pick. Unthinkable, right? Well, PvE fixes are once again here to save the day though, and bring Arms Warriors to a much more viable state, as they're receiving an overall 4% damage buff alongside further increases to both Rend and Deep Wounds, resulting in a pretty hefty buff to overall damage. Especially considering both the 2-piece and 4-piece tier set are centric around Deep Wounds, which while not amazing, can be picked up quite safely as 3 out of the 4 pieces have versatility. Placing Arms Warriors is tricky, even with these changes, it still might be the 
the case that Fury remains to be a better option into casters thanks to its single target pressure combined with Slaughterhouse. But with a lot of casters being targeted in this round of hotfixes, we predict melee becoming considerably more competitive. So for that reason, we'll be moving Arms Warrior up one tier from A to A+. One very surprising spec that's been performing recently is Retribution Paladin. Now, I know what you're thinking, we thought the exact same. How can Retribution Paladins be performing well in what's been a caster heavy meta? Well, quite honestly, they have no right to be, but you can't argue with the statistics, where especially in North America, Retribution is one of the highest performing melee above 2100. Could this have something to do with the lasting effects of their popularity dwindling over from last season? We're not sure. But it's undeniable that Retribution Paladins are without a doubt performing especially well at mid to low ratings. Primarily, we believe this is down to a few factors. First is that Retribution is very good into Subtlety Rogue. Second of all is just the general class design of Ret. Solo Shuffle is a dangerous setting, cooldowns are consistently being overlapped and misused, and in recent times, Retribution Paladins have all mostly shifted over to picking up Crusade, which if you don't know, is one of the most powerful cooldowns in the game, especially nearing the later end. Due to this, Retribution Paladins have the possibility of killing through any level of incoming healing, making it very punishing for lower rated and less coordinated players to play against. And of course, tier sets come into play as well, and much like Sub Rogue and Enhancement Shaman, Retribution Paladins have one of the strong ones. Despite not getting any direct tuning this patch, if we do end up seeing casters falling slightly more in line with melee after this round of hotfixes as predicted. It's a fair assumption to make that Retribution Paladin's strength will inherently go up, especially at the lower end of ratings, and for this reason we'll be moving them up from A tier to A+. Having a look at the complete melee tier list, the overall balance looks pretty good, with no melee being standout enough to warrant an S tier position. Taking a look at our A plus tier, Demon Hunters are still holding their position as one of the top melee this season, remaining to be one of the best melee for handling casters, since Demon Hunter passively takes less spell damage. Especially since 10.1 after adapting to a build more focused around I-beam and single target damage to make the most out of their tier set. Speaking of which, Survival Hunter will also be finding themselves climbing one rank this update, primarily thanks to their very powerful full tier set. Then looking at our A tier, surprisingly most of these specs actually benefited from the hotfixes. Windwalkers got a rather huge 80% buff to Whirling Dragon Punch, but with how considerably underwhelming this was previously, we still don't think it will be preferred over Serenity. Assassination, despite getting a 5% nerf, will more than likely end up still being weaker than Subtlety when facing casters, but we could see this change if we do see melee becoming more dominant. And Feral Druids, after receiving a slight buff to their tier set, will be slightly stronger, but not enough to warrant their position changing. Then inside of our B tier, we have Outlaw Rogue joined by both specs of Death Knight, who are still holding out hope for their much needed buffs this season after somehow being forgotten in this week's round of tuning. Moving into our range tier list now, the first spec seeing some movement is Fire Mage. Overall, Mage continues to have one of the biggest learning curves for any ranged DPS player. That being said, the current go-to Fire Mage spec and playstyle makes it a whole lot easier. The reason for this is the combination of the reworked Flame Cannon and new addition of Glass Cannon, making the spec very reminiscent to the old Greater Pyroblast days. Especially when dealing with caster-filled lobbies, Fire Mage is able to sit back with a range far greater than any other spec in the game, using that range and distance to then just unload godly amounts of damage. In fact, when left to free cast, Fire Mages can do some of the highest damage in the game. That being said, the Tuesday hotfixes however did target both Flame Cannon and Glass Cannon by increasing the health lost by Glass Cannon while reducing the health gained by Flame Cannon. Due to the nature of Flame Cannon, we could see Fire struggling slightly when the opposing team has a melee. In our last update, we had Fire Mage at A tier, which was definitely lower than they should have been considering how they've been performing over the last few weeks. So even in the wake of these nerfs, we'll be moving Fire from A up to A plus with this update. The spec getting hit the hardest this patch is Destruction Warlock. Destruction has been dominating the solo shuffle scene, being by far the most represented and best performing caster in both regions. This week's round of hotfixes aim to fix this with a two-pronged attack, targeting both Warlock as a whole and then the specs individually. As we see nerfs to the passive damage from Fel Barrage provided by the talent Inquisitor's Gaze, which after its buffs a few patches ago, has been consistently finding itself in the top of a Destruction Warlock's damage overall damage breakdown. Alongside also targeting Amplifying Curse, this has been sleeper overpowered since its introduction when not facing a decurse, as it allowed for the Warlock to maintain one of its effects indefinitely, leaving no room for counterplay. Destruction as a spec was also targeted in the worst, or well best if you don't play the spec, way possible, by reducing the instant damage from conflagration and shadow burn even further. 
So overall, these changes are targeting a Destruction Warlock's highest three instant damaging abilities, making this spec considerably weaker, especially when unable to cast. Because of this, we'll be moving Destruction Warlock down from S tier to A plus tier for now, but depending on the meta, could end up dropping even lower. The other casting dominating the meta prior to these hotfixes was the not-so-balanced Druid. This week's class tuning included nerfs to Astral Power Generation, Star Surge Burst, and an incredibly minor nerf to Alkin Adept, resulting in the cast time being approximately 0.3 seconds longer. Overall, these nerfs shouldn't really affect too much, and we still forecast that Balanced Druids will continue to be the best ranged DPS in the game. And truthfully, the only real truly impactful one here is the change to Goldrin's Fang, which for how strong Balanced Druid has been, is getting off with barely a slap on the wrist. For this reason, we'll be keeping Balanced Druid inside of our S tier for this update. Taking a look at our completed ranged tier list, we have Balanced Druids now being the only true S tier caster. The new additions to our A plus tier this update are Destruction Warlock who dropped down, Fire Mage who moved up, and Beast Mastery Hunter who will also be climbing up one rank this round of hotfixes after receiving a 5% buff to damage all around, which when combined with their tier set will make them once again one of the highest consistent damage range DPS specs in the game. Whereas Elemental Demonology and Shadow Priests all keep their A plus tiered placements. Shadow Priests continue to be very dominant casters right now, but still remain to be held back from reaching any higher on the list by their reliance on hard casting. But as long as you're not finding yourself in melee heavy lobbies and hopefully have a caster on your team acting as a double threat, you can have a huge impact on the game. Looking at our A tier, we've got Affliction Warlock and Marksmanship Hunter, also now joined by Frost Mage. The reason for this being that it's just not as easy against casters nor comparable in strength as its fire counterpart, even factoring in the nerfs. Whereas Affliction Warlocks, who after getting a nice increase to the backlash damage of Unstable Affliction, were still drastically affected by the nerfs to both Inquisitor's Gaze and Amplify Curse, so should remain equal in strength. Marksmanship Hunter is the outlier here, who over recent times has become almost extinct in representation, but with buffs to all damaging abilities coupled with the fact the spec as a whole scales very well with secondary stats. We wouldn't be surprised in seeing them climbing a lot higher in our next update. Then at the bottom of our tier list, we have Devastation and Arcane Mage. Devastation Evoker, although able to have a very big impact on the game in specific compositions, remains to be lacking in solo shuffle when compared to the level of some of the stronger casters in the meta right now. Finally, let's wrap things up on the healing side of things, with the first spec seeing some movement being Disciplined Priest. Discipline has been a standout healer ever since its buffs to Power Word Shield, becoming one of the best specs at keeping their teams alive due to that newly found healing output coupled with their wide array of defensive cooldowns. This week's hotfixes target exactly that, by reducing the healing of Power Word Shield by 15%, which, when you consider how much of a Disciplined Priest's overall healing consisted of this, is a huge blow. Then, just like kicking somebody when they're already down, one of Discipline's already weak points in their mana has also been targeted by nerfing Inner Light by 5%, offset with a 10% buff to Atonement Healing. This was all done in an attempt to shift back Discipline Priest to its original offensive DNA, where utilizing and healing via Atonement is key. But ever since Discipline's drastic nerfs to damage a few patches back, this just isn't feasible, and when left to free cast, Atonement isn't anywhere near enough healing to even remotely begin to heal through the sustained damage some specs are capable of doing. Reducing healing and nerfing mana at the same time is always an incredibly big blow for healers, and for this reason, we're going to be moving Discipline down from S2 ranks to our A tier. Also being targeted this patch were the reigning healing kings, Mistweaver Monks. Mistweaver received some big nerfs primarily targeted at their mana efficiency with a three-pronged attack, reducing the effectiveness of their tier set, Soul Fang Infusion. Alongside now also attaching a mana cost to Zen Spheres, which is an impactful nerf to the ability, as now there will be a drawback from consistently swapping the orbs around. Then, to top it all off, a 5% flat out nerf to mana regeneration. This was definitely warranted though, as previously Mistweaver Monks had what seemed like endless mana, even in the longest of games. Also with these nerfs, we saw healing slightly targeted with a 15% nerf to the healing of Enveloping Mist. So, what do these changes mean for Mistweaver? Well, strictly speaking for Solo Shuffle, the mana nerfs shouldn't really do too much, as it's quite rare that mana becomes an issue to begin with. That in mind, what this does do is put them on the lower end of mana efficiency when compared to the other healers, so if games do end up going the distance, it can potentially open up a win condition. On the healing front though, a 15% nerf to enveloping, while definitely noticeable, won't do as much as you'd expect, and is arguably the wrong ability to target. The reason for this is that most of enveloping mist power is in the healing increase it provides on the target, rather than the healing itself. So overall for Solo Shuffle, Mistweaver 
armor should be almost identical in terms of strength, assuming the game doesn't go the distance. As a result, for now, we'll be keeping them as our only S tier healer despite these nerfs. One healer to watch in the coming weeks is Restoration Druid, who akin to Mistweaver Monks are one of the few healers that can quite reliably heal through almost any level of damage, and are despite receiving no changes, are set to get all the more powerful once more players acquire the 4 piece tier set which for Restoration Druid provides a huge flat increase to overall healing among some other benefits. Due to the nerfs to other healers bringing them slightly more in line with the rest of the pack, we figured it's only fair that Restoration Druid climbs up one rank. The healer tier list as a whole is looking very different to last update, with Mistweaver Monks remaining to be the kings of solo shuffle, but just now a little less ahead of the rest. For our A-plus tier, we have two new additions both moving up in Restoration Druid and Restoration Shaman. Restoration Shamans are still one of the strongest healers given their tools when playing against casters in the meta right now, but can still struggle with throughput, requiring you to be very proactive if you want to be able to compete with Mistweaver. Disciplined Priest will now be joining Holy Priest and Preservation inside of our A tier, who both see no movement. Both specs continue to have their clear weaknesses when pitted against any of the higher healers right now. Then at the bottom of our list, we'll be moving Fistweaver's Monk down to join Holy Paladin in our B tier. This is due to the meta currently favoring casters. And Holy Paladins especially feel too inconsistent for solo shuffle. Although they boast some extremely good anti-melee tech, none of it even matters if all you proc are caster heavy lobbies. So as the healer in most need of some love, we think Holy Paladins are best represented alongside Fistweaver as the weakest healers right now. Speaking of which, if you want to gain rating fast this season no matter your spec, we have some amazing new courses which can only be found at skillcap.com. This includes brand new master and minutes guides for every role, which condense years of game knowledge into bite-sized pieces. We even have a new buff knowledge course, which teaches you what to look out for and how to dispel against every class. We're also updating class courses every week, including a redesign to all of our damage and healing guides in 10.1, with a brand new learning experience, which includes new micro commentaries and Master in Minutes guides where you can learn all the tricks on how to min max. So if you want to stay ahead of the meta and get the rating you've always wanted, then take advantage of our rank up game guarantee and learn more about Skillcat by visiting the links below. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video.